Hey Magic fans, welcome back. This is your captain speaking on Captain Clyde's MTG. Today we have more spoilers for Lord of the Rings of Magic the Gathering. Uh, only got a couple this time, only about 12. They slowed back, didn't give us the full schlong up to the knuckle. Um, so yeah, we'll get a little more time to talk, a little more time to look at it. And don't forget, a little more time for you to subscribe. We're trying to get to a thousand peeps. Appreciate all the help. So here we go. First off, we have Doors of Durin. So green, red, and three for a legendary artifact. Whenever you attack, scry two. Then you may reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it on the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Um, until your next turn, it gains trample. If you control a dwarf and... Oh, it gains trample if you control a dwarf and hexproof if you control an elf. Very interesting to make elf dwarf decks. I mean, Legolas and... Uh, the, Gim the big G uh, are buddies, so I kind of like the flavor, um, like the art. Five mana seems a bit much, but in Commander, probably going to be pretty good. Uh, probably be pretty sweet in Brawl on Arena, too. Um, I mean, just the ability for five mana with a, to have a deck full of two and three casting cost dwarves and elves, you just start whipping big nappies off the top of your deck. Seems pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. Next, we have Fall of Gilgalad. So, for a green and one, we have a saga. Uh, we just want to mention this, too. None of the sagas in this set currently have read ahead, so we're back to normal sagas. Uh, for one, scry two. Not bad for a green spell. On two, put two plus one plus one counters to creature control. Um, I mean, that's only good if you have creatures, but if you're running elves, ba dum bump. Uh, and three, until end of turn, target creature control gains. When this creature dies, draw two cards, then that creature... When this creature dies, you draw two cards. Then that creature fights up to one other target creature. Okay, hang on. So to the end of the turn, target creature control gains. When this creature dies, you draw two. Then it has the ability to make it fight something. Okay, okay, I get it. So you can make your 1-1 one, one elf, a 3-3 three, three elf for two mana. And then you can make it fight something and then draw two cards. A lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on there. I kind of like that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how good it really is. Uh, in Limited, obviously, it's going to be a bomb. Um, but in Commander and other formats, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, I mean, sacrificing a creature to draw two cards and killing your opponent's stuff seems pretty good to me for two mana. And next we have Lauren. We have non-English. That's what we have because I didn't pay attention to what I was cutting and pasting. But that's okay because I can read it. So we have... Lauren, the House of Healing, of the House of Healing, sorry. Uh, a blue and two for a one four. Legendary creature, human cleric, at everything in this set's legendary. Jesus. Um, untap, uh, you can tap it to untap another target permanent, or tap it to untap two other target legendary creatures. I'm sure somewhere in God's Green Earth of Magic, this is part of a combo that's going to be just absurd. Um... Don't really have the time to go into it right now because there's just way too much going on. But when you're looking around Commander and what have you, yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be a thing. I don't know how it's not gonna be a thing. Anyway, next we have Friendly Rivalry. Um, imagine, wonder what that's from. Gimli, 42, Master Legolas. Anyway, uh, green, red, instant target creature control, and up to one other target legendary creature you control. Each deal damage equal to their power to target creature you don't control. Eh, decent removal for limited. Um, that's probably about as far as it's going to go, though. Got a lot of stuff and conditions. and Then we have Saruman the White on a blue card. That makes perfect sense. Anyway, moving on. Blue and four for a 4-4 four with Ward 2. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you get to a mass 2. Orcs, that is. But um bum um, But yeah, good flavor. Um, it's just really weird to see Saruman the White as a blue card. This is... I mean, there's nothing wrong with this being a white card, to be honest with you, because there's plenty of white cards that makes dudes, but whatever. Moving on. Next, we have Forge Anew. We have a white and two enchantment. Uh, when Forge Anew enters the battlefield, return target equipment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's pretty sweet. As long as it's your turn, you may activate equipped abilities anytime you could cast an instant. Okay. Wait a minute. As long as it's your turn. Okay, not as good, but 
Uh, you may pay zero rather than pay the equip cost of the first equip ability you activate during each of your turns. Okay, even better. This is probably going to see a one or two of in hammer time. Yes, it's three mana. But the ability to put the hammer on something for free, even though it costs three, is amazing. Plus, it may see more play because if your hammer gets countered to put in the graveyard, you play this for three, uh, and you get to get your hammer out of the graveyard, put it in the battlefield, then equip it. So, yeah, the more I think about it, the more I'm, ta I'm talking myself right into playing four of these in hammer time, um, or at least sideboarding two and starting two. Like, this seems amazing. Okay, moving on. Next, we have the Torment of Golem. Black and three. It's only a common. So it's a sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. A mass two. This is awful. Uh, only going to see limited play. Uh, this doesn't do a whole lot of anything. And why is this guy missing fingers? They're tormenting. Anyway, next card. Let's just not go there. All right, we have Ring Sight. Um... They're gonna have to fix this. This guy's clearly not a black guy, so it can't be uh, can't be a ring wraith. That's Aragorn humor. Help me out here. Anyway, moving on. Black and blue and one sorcery. The ring tempts you. Search your library for a card that shares a color with a legendary creature you control. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. This is nice. Uh, if you're running a ring tempts you deck, I mean this is a good starter. Uh, just to do that. But even without the ring tempting you, but it, it will no matter what. The ability to search your library for a card that shares the color of the legendary creature you control, this is a three mana tutor. Because you search a card that shares a color of a legendary creature you control. Yes, yeah, she's a creature that has to stay in play, yada yada yada. But still, this is a tutor ability for three mana for any card. I think it's going to see a lot of play even as an uncommon. I, mm, I, I see a lot of potential here, guys. Help me out below in the comment section. All right, moving on. Next we have March from the Black Gate. A uh, black and one enchantment. Uh, it's an uncommon when March from the Black Gate enters the battlefield or, oh, excuse me, or, and whenever an army you control attacks, you amass one orc. Huh. Okay. So I'm assuming it means if you don't control an army, create a 0-0 zero, zero black orc army creature token first. So I wonder if the orc army thing means that you have to have one, an amass token to get it to keep going off. But it seems like you wouldn't because, I don't know, we'll have to look into that. Uh, hmm. Whenever you or battlefield and whenever an army you control attacks. Yeah, I think this has to be amass tokens only. Anyway, moving on. Still seems pretty good. It's almost like a fixed bitter blossom. Um, without the drawbacks, without being overpowered. Anyhow, moving forward. Moving on, moving on. Next, we have Grond, the Gatebreaker. I don't remember this. Uh, black and three for a 5-5 five, five trampling legendary artifact vehicle. Oh, boy. As long as it's your turn and you control an army, Grond, the Gatebreaker, is an artifact creature. Sweet mother of... Wow. So, a 4-4-5-5 four, four, five, five with trample. All you got to do is have an amass token in play. Hmm. Seems good. Next, we have the Book of Manzabruel. God, I probably butchered that. Anyway, so for a red and two, you get to amass orcs one, so one one black army. Uh, on two, you get to amass orcs two, so if your one one dies, you then get a two two. If your one one's alive, it now becomes a three three. And then on three, creatures you control get plus one plus zero oh, and gain menace till end of turn. Hmm. So this seems good. Uh, I like what it's doing, but I don't know if it's enough at Uncommon. Uh, I mean, it'd be different if he gave you a 1-1, one, one, then a 2-2, two, two, and then made them both plus 1, plus 0, oh, and Menace. But you end up, could end up with just a 3-3 three, three that only becomes a 4-3 with Menace instead of a 2-2 two, two and a 3-3. Three, three, or, I'm sorry, a 2-1 and a 3-2. So you lose a point of damage. But if you're playing red, like... Maybe this is a thing, but three mana and a red is not where you want to be. Uh, I got I got so many emotions about this. Seems neat, seems cool, but I, I just don't think it's gonna I just don't think it's gonna get there. Probably gonna be good and limited. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't be good and limited. 
But anyway, so that's all the cards we have for you today. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll keep the eye out and make more videos tomorrow after the spoilers and leaks and all the other shenanigans go down. Stay tuned tomorrow evening uh, before these leaks videos come out. There'll be a video coming out about the box toppers, but ump bump and what box toppers are going to be in this set. Boy, it's going to be a doozy. So until next time, be kind. Hope to see you across from the game table. Don't forget to subscribe. And nobody remembers to do that.